Hi friends, welcome back. Uh, now we look at uh, uh, two models that I have been talking about in Excel and we are looking at uh, a multiple regression model where uh, we would find out how a company's multiple is sensitive with various factors. Now the goal here is to understand how to do the same in Excel and look at some of the formulas. So the engine or the heart of this engine is the Linus function that uh, uh, that would do the multiple regression and give uh, the values to you. At the same time an interesting part here is that uh, you need to reduce the size of the linest function because uh, you need to make sure that when you add uh, more variables things go automatic. So you should have an option to make sure which variable you choose. So let me show you how. So for example if you look here I have an option to select uh, which variable I want. So if I select a true and under that that's debt to EBITDA the next true is capex to sale. You go here and you see that debt to EBITDA and capex to sale. I can add another variable if I put a true here and uh, that would get that. So to make sure that happen I have used uh, indirect functions and what indirect function is doing is uh, finding out uh, uh, the dynamic ranges that uh, should go into the linest function. So when I add another function here, say suppose I want to find out how does the multiple change on return on equity variable. I'll put a true here and return on equity would jump in here. So to do this, I have created this dynamic range that would help me resize the multiple linear regression equation part and, and, and would help me to move ahead from there. Now let's look at the final output here. So if I look at the final output here, I have two things that I want to look at. Uh, first thing is that the regression should make sense statistically. And the second is contribution of these variables to build up the multiple should make sense. So I'm talking about Elbit systems here. So uh, when you look at the multiple of Elbit and you see that EV by EBITDA multiple is say suppose 7 or 8 uh, at this time. How does growth, market factors, cap capital expenditure, leverage and intercept uh, contribute uh, to the multiple formation? So when I look at that I have, uh, I have actually predicted it and let me show you how it goes into the old numbers. So if I take old values, another variation that I could take is the next 12 month and the last 12 month uh, values. So that's another variation that I could add into. But this is how I have actually used the actual and the model fit numbers. So I have uh, my numbers uh, uh, here uh, which has the contribution. Uh, the numbers that tells uh, me whether or not the R square is good or not. So those are given from uh, this table. So the R square here is around 41% which is a fair enough R square and uh, whatever is hard coded I have uh, marked it here. So there are a few development points that I would like to add so I have pasted that in the to do. You can use Yahoo input uh, to get the data. If you want to check whether everything is right you can just create that check by running the regression uh, on that ranges manually and then you can check the numbers. So this would help me advise a company on various factors that I believe would move a multiple so that they can take a particular strategy when it comes to leverage and here I have taken just one company. Ideally I should take all the companies of this sector so that I can find out how these uh, uh, numbers uh, contribute to the final outcome. So this is about the multiple regression equation uh, contribution. So there uh, are few important things that we can do using this analysis. Uh, the first is that we can understand when these factors fail by looking at the history. So if the disturbance become large uh, we can possibly find out uh, why they were large and things like that and uh, we can probably look at a growing phase. So ultimately I'm going to get uh, uh, two things. Uh, I'm going to get a back test but I'm also going to get a contribution uh, image uh, where I can find out how these are contributing.
okay so this has to be done by taking into account all peers that you want to use because you want to believe that all peers have the same uh, explanation of uh, multiple so if your peer is having high leverage uh, uh, and, and it, it is having good multiple then maybe you want to increase your leverage if your peer is uh, doing more return on capital maybe you want to do more return on capital and to quantify how would that affect your multiple because a change in multiple reflects a direct uh, change in your valuation so uh, this is how we, we will look at here I'm moving back here and uh, getting more into the different kind of things that we have so uh, we will we have to make sure that this true false flow into the system to do that uh, uh, we have to bring a framework here so the framework is not tough but uh, again uh, a few things that are changed here because uh, you want to make sure that you copy the right thing uh, that that's one part now uh, you have the model and the actual number with you uh, which you can fit uh, it, 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 it's being corrected uh, uh, for uh, what you want to do so uh, th that's how you're going to look at things uh, uh, now when we move ahead from here uh, uh, you have selection of like 16 parameters because Excel allows uh, 16 parameters and are uh, not uh, more than that so uh, in, in case you are looking at uh, different numbers uh, in, in case you want to get more numbers then uh, you can get uh, those numbers as well now there are two things here uh, the difference between NTM and LTM and the importance of growth in explaining the multiple so uh, let me see if I have something here <clears throat> yeah here it is so growth now when we look at technology company the maximum contribution uh, is probably explained uh, uh, by growth maybe in defense it's more about uh, the distribution thing and things like that uh, that's one part uh, in, in and the equation that you get is for the whole sector uh, the other part that uh, you want to uh, make sure that you get is uh, uh, when you have this regression equation you have you can have like uh, more than 100 uh, factors which you can uh, uh, then group and uh, you can make sure that you uh, uh, use the right uh, group so you can have a macro group you can have a return policy group you can have a leverage group now your leverage group would have uh, uh, the debt to uh, EBITDA the debt to equity the debt to total asset and you want to fit in that uh, makes more sense to you so a, a, a lot of uh, permutations required here and and the other part is uh, the NTM versus the LTM uh, numbers so most of the times uh, the multiple is forward looking so uh, we would uh, use uh, uh, the NTM number because uh, even going uh, back into the history we want to make sure that uh, we have those things accounted for so this is uh, the contribution now uh, for this you have to pull uh, the, these data for all the companies get it uh, into Excel and perform the regression I'll, I'll show you an alternative way to do the same in R uh, and how to change uh, uh, the regression in R so that's uh, that's something that I plan to do in, in a later thing okay so that, that was about sectors now each sector behave in a different way uh, you might want to get some custom faction, uh, factors like uh, oil prices when you are doing some oil company or uh, whatever you think uh, might make sense you you can bring uh, those things uh, inside the system so if it's an energy company uh, you can have electricity prices and uh, things like that so th th that was about a softer look here into the regression equation we move to the next model which is the Monte Carlo simulation now this is a bit tricky because you have got many data tables here which uh, you want to set in and uh, different uh, uh, stochastic uh, uh, equations that uh, you would like to lo look at so the data tables uh, everything is uh, performed using data tables so you need to uh, have a good understanding on how to link up things the lookups between the data tables then you have to be make sure uh, you have to do seasonality thing uh, these are the things that I would like to probably add from here then you have to make sure that you use override wherever it's required uh, you need to have those repo functions built in uh, you need to make um, uh, 
of the volatility and explain how that volatility is explained by you need to make a waterfall model on how the company is going to use its funds uh, into the future you have to use uh, uh, a VBA add-in to get all those things you need to make sure that you uh, you can draw histograms dynamically and you pull a, a data server from Yahoo and use a log uh, join now join split would add another dimension uh, uh, to the data table so this is your input now your input uh, you want to have uh, EBITDA uh, 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 multiple uh, margin and, and that's uh, where your engine is built up of so I I've been talking about uh, main uh, engine building elements uh, uh, that, that would be used uh, for uh, uh, for the MC setup so let me write that again So which stochastic uh, uh, processes would be used? So uh, we would use uh, evolution of sales into the future, margin, multiple, that's internal, interest rate, S&P, did I miss anything? So uh, sales, margin, multiple, and yes CFO and yeah I, I think that is it because uh, you need to clean those uh, net income and the CFO so you need to have this option as well uh, and, and the broad market parameters I'll, I'll make sure that I I have those in the framework now after giving the input uh, let me show you uh, how the output would uh, look like so I would keep this automatic for now and I'll show you how the numbers look like before moving ahead. So here I have kept three things uh, stochastic sales margin and multiple which means that I am assuming that they will follow a, a, a random uh, walk into the future. Uh, no, don't uh, catch me on that word, but we follow that they'll have randomness into the future and they'll be uh, uh, evolving over the time in, in simpler words if I put that. Now, if I look at it, which of these three things uh, is most volatile? and I can calculate the volatilities of the share price and I can link it them but here I see that multiples have uh, been most volatile and margins now this is a forward looking measure and this depends on uh, uh, the volatilities that I have taken uh, plus uh, 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 the different uh, models that I have assumed uh, to drop those volatilities this is a histogram uh, does not look so good but probably I'll imp uh, improve that it's a bit uh, tricky to make because uh, you need to make the bin size then you need, you need to use a very big count function where uh, this becomes uh, tricky so uh, uh, that's where you will get that now uh, then you have uh, uh, those numbers that you want to look at and you want to draw the path so let's look at a very simple model this is AR010 model where you are regressing T with T minus 1 so you first calculate the slope and the intercept from the past and you use that uh, to develop a model into the future you may need to make sure that you scale up uh, the residuals which are normally distributed so I say that uh, the future price is uh, an intercept multiplied by a plus uh, a slope term multiplied by the value of the last term plus a residuals now this residuals I can play a lot because uh, I can have correlated residuals as well so for now I'm assuming that these residuals are independent which means that all these processes are independent they are not affected which is not a very good assumption to take so I need to take the correlated residuals but okay it's, it's fine till now so I make these parts and this is how I see the next uh, 20 uh, quarters 20 quarters or 5 years so I am trying to predict how things would go for the next uh, 5 years I need to cap these things because sales cannot go negative 
so I, I would rather use a cap so this is the uh, the simple model for the sales uh, then you have de-seasonalization I've shown some example uh, uh, you you might be tempted to believe that uh, you would use a jump diffusion model I have borrowed this from investexcel.net uh, uh, where you will have a jump in uh, a multiple because that's related to price so you you not don't know when that jump is going to happen you need to recalibrate numbers uh, from the past uh, uh, the, the thing that's going to help us in advising uh, a company based on these numbers uh, uh, to to model up is uh, uh, what would happen if they do repo on various strategies so what would happen if they do a repo by using a strategy price falls or uh, multiple fall or percent of EBITDA so you need to build up all those accounting equations and uh, how, how would uh, uh, the price fall and uh, the function of sales so if, if you take the multiple as constant what would happen if you take a multiple as a, a function of sales what would happen <clears throat> so and and what would happen if you take different stochastic equation so that that's area so here you see uh, <clears throat> this is the return percent of uh, EBITDA and function of sale jump diffusion so <clears throat> you have taken multiple <clears throat> constant versus a jump diffusion model for the multiple <clears throat> so you are finding out internal rate of return on all these policy making so for that you have used a jump diffusion model to model the uh, <coughs> uh, EV by EBITDA multiple uh, you can probably uh, uh, take that constant if you would like to but that's not a good idea then you have mean reversing margins uh, uh, because you want to believe that margins would revert to their mean so if, if you see these numbers these are mean reverting so just adding those volatilities you can use a better model if you would like to then you have random numbers I want to do a little bit uh, more play where I would like to transform things but okay it's, it's, it's for now I have not taken that and then I plan to add uh, a convertible <coughs> bond section so everything would uh, go in here the policy that you take and the share purchase now the share price would change dynamically and hence your uh, share purchase would change dynamically so uh, the number of share count would be dependent on uh, what what strategy you take and excel will do the rest so that that was a little intro to the monte carlo framework for uh, quantfin advisory i hope this was useful for you